What's up everyone, Mr. Slin here with a match commentary from an ESCA intermediate match of season 17. This is actually my own gameplay. I know I don't put very many of these up on YouTube, but I'm hoping to do more of these in the future. So this match is against uh, Satan Take the Wheel on CP Metalworks. Going into this match, Satan Take the Wheel is 7-2. Goldman Sachs, my team, is 6-3. And, and so there's some pretty big playoff implications and uh, it ends up being a pretty good match. Happy to show you guys my gameplay. So. Uh, right at the start, we're going to come lower, and I'm going to crit heal my scouts above me. And we instantly get to pick up the Devil Man, and my team is playing defensively, because we know that they're losing, stuff's going to come onto me. So you see the soldier coming in from behind, scouted my house behind, and I actually made the wrong move, <laughs> and immediately run straight underneath. And uh, not the best move there, as you saw was, you know, we took the Devil Man out, I knew we were going to win, and that scout was behind me in house, and I heard a call from a teammate saying, push underneath. And I ran underneath by myself, just blindly, expecting to meet someone on the other side. And actually, my team ran at the top right side. So that was a, a misplay on my part. And uh, right here, I go crits Krieg because I know we're going to win middle. And their medic's spawning now at the same time. So if I'm constantly healing and building up my uber, I should end up with a 20% crits Krieg advantage by the end of it. And what you're going to see is that it's not going to work out so well for my teams. Um, typically, you want to go crits Krieg before they get uber and that actually ends up working pretty well because you can crits maybe get two picks maybe get a medic pick and before they get uber if you get two picks before they get the uber you know it's gonna work out well for you even if they do have uber two minute advantage trumps uber every day of the week and as you see here we're getting close to uber we end up with a 30 percent advantage actually and we're gonna crits huli off the start and huli's gonna call right here don't commit to this uber don't commit you know we're just gonna crits here see what we can get and actually huli ends up being the one committing and going down to the pipe here from xan out of bottom right so he goes down and we know they have uber so right now we're gonna play super defensively we need to get this force on middle we're gonna trade the middle point in exchange for their uber so there's nothing we can do to stop them from taking middle point they have uber we're down two players including our demo man it's gonna be a really tough force and it's gonna rely heavily on our soldiers to spam and get this so they're spamming now our scouts are backing out scouts are terrible in the situation for getting a force but actually you see jav pushing up and Devin actually dies to their um a player as well they didn't even use uber so Zigster gets out alive and we lose a scout, but uh, we didn't get the force. So that's really bad for us because they're using the Uber to get this next point. Again, Crits Creek is terrible against Uber, and you know that they're going to Uber into us here, and they know that I'm on Crits because I never died. So we're going to Crits here to try and force the Uber. We force it. Goldfish is going to give his life for me. I'm going to run out, and I, once again, we're down two players. So we're not going to be able to defend this fourth point here. And I tell Huli, uh, I want to get over to Huli there, but if I cross over the front, I'm going to die. So instead, I come around the back side here to ensure that I stay alive. Because if I stay alive, I'll have a Crits Creek advantage. Devin goes down again in the lobby, and it looks like um, it looks like they're actually doing a pretty good job of taking fourth point and pushing, but then they lose their medic. Jab made a sick play out of the shutter and takes him down. And now I know they're going to sacrifice for me, and I'm backing off here. Um, but you're going to see I'm going to make a mistake as that... Oh, Xan just gets me right off the with the stickies there on the side. I, I was in a very safe position. Like, I was peeking. I knew that their soldiers were not in a good position to bomb. And the only player in was the Demo Man. I thought he was going to go down sooner. And I pushed up a little bit too quickly. And just walked straight into the stickies. And after that first one hit me, it juggled me up and kept me in play. So, really nice job there by Xan taking me down. I didn't want to be on Crits Creek anyways. Um, but I could have hopped into spawn, switched over to Uber, and then pushed out with it. Um, bit of a mistake there by me. So, it's the second time you've seen me make an overextending play and going down there and uh, so far th in this match I have been playing my best uh, right now uh, so I died to Xan you know Rachel's gonna have a 40% uber advantage on me and we know they're gonna push soon so what I'm telling my team is hey look they're getting uber soon let's get buffs everyone get buffed up here we have to get the force and this is something I've been really hammering in uh, with my team and we've all been working on this is Okay, when you know they're coming in with Uber, we have to get the force. You can't just give up points for free without forcing the Uber. So you see them coming in here, trying to force. I'm calling, I'm on the right side, I'm on the right side. So Huli comes over here to help me out. They force the Uber, and I rotate over to Shutter to heal Goldfish. And now we know that I'm 15 seconds away from getting Uber here at 78%. So we're building this up. You know, I'm like, guys, get buffed. We're going to do this push right now. And so I'm buffing left side lobby. And Goldfish is like, okay, let's do it in Shutter. So I pop immediately, and I bring in a scout with me. And this is a really good thing. I also flash Zigster, I think, in here to try and get him in. Yeah. And unfortunately, the entire team for the blue team just bails. Uh, we do know there's one behind, so they're fighting, and Devin goes down, and Huli and I go back for it to get the kill there. Uh, but I don't want to let them in through the front, so I'm healing Zigster here, going, okay, guys, take care of the back. Me and Zig got the front. Um, 
And that smile goes down, it's 5 on 5, and you know, again, same exact situation as before, 30% of your advantage for the blue team. And it's really difficult when it's in this back and forth situation where the enemy team is pushing, and you're just kind of defending, and you're trying your best to resist it, but our uber wasn't that good, you saw it earlier, I took in two soldiers and a scout, and the blue team just completely kited it out to yard, so there was nothing that we could do there to, get, to catch them. Now here comes the uber. Same thing happens <laughs> to them when we do it though. It's like when they popped in, we totally kind that. None of us went- oh, goldfish went down. Okay, only one person goes down and as a soldier, not a big deal at all. I have uber and I'm calling, let's do uber on the point guys. I want to go into them with this. I need a scout on the point right now. We're going to try and do this push. It's uh, Zixer gets the pick over on left side on Stochastic, and I'm like, guys, we need to do this push. Come on, come on. I have my, ha I have, I have Huli. I need a scout. So here comes Jav, and now we're going to do a two-man advantage uber. Uh, Zixer takes down Sign Coast Town as well. And we don't even need to use it at this point because they've completely backed out. We took uh, an extra man. And so with this man advantage, we can just begin pushing middle. We know they don't have it yet because it takes 40 seconds to build that uber. They're 20 seconds away from getting it. And I'm calling, okay, let's just wait for goldfish. Make sure we have the number advantage for that mid push because you need soldiers in on it if you want to have an effective uber. So goldfish, me, and Devin are walking out that top left side. And I'm dodging. I'm trying not to use, but I know at the same time they're super close to getting uber. Soldier bombs me when I'm at half health, so I just decide to pop. And we do get the pick onto the roamer, but nothing else here. And this is really bad news for us because they have Uber, and we took just a little bit too long to do this push when I waited for Goldfish. So now we're backing out. Pretty good kiting from us, actually. Uh, yeah, no one died on that Uber. So pretty good exchange. And we know we have a slight number advantage here for just a moment. You know, Smile got that forward spawn, but we could still do this push. We could still make a play out in the yard. So uh, we're poking the we're poking the house here, and Huli gets the pick on to split. Zigster goes down in the house as well, so I call, okay, okay, no, 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 we can't do this, we can't do this, I have no heals on anybody, we're at a bad spot, Goldfish says, no, we're in guard, I got this, he gets the roamer, and it's still 4 on 4, still can't do anything, so, we're gonna reset once again, and this is actually decent for us now, so before, when we were holding second point with 30% disadvantage, now, it's even Ubers, and we actually have a chance to hold this off, so you can see our hold here is gonna be a little bit different, um, typical hold, just standing on the point, but once the Ubers actually even out, Goldfish and I are gonna stand at that upper choke, and try and lock off the bridge because that's the shortest route and that's one of the easiest ways for them to bomb a roaming soldier into me if we're not blocking that off. So Goldfish is going to lock up that upper door and the roaming soldier I'm expecting it to come from either on the tunnel underneath or on the alley on the deep right side. So Goldfish locking that upper door, I'm buffing my scout. That scout on that upper right side uh, metal sheet there is critical to blocking that roaming soldier out of alley. Because the, the alley is has no ceiling on it, just the skybox, so a soldier can bomb get a rocket off of the wall, and then fly in on me before I can do anything about it. Um, I get called over to the right side to help Goldfish out on a play, but it doesn't really work out. Split was down to like less than 20 health. We couldn't finish that off there. I'm still making sure that everybody has really high health here, because I don't have uh, I don't have any reason not to buff everybody. I, I, I already have my uber, I can heal as many people as I want, so I'm just switching targets as fast as I can, trying to get as many people buffed as I can. But my teammates like to run around and uh, poke and get up vision on the enemy team, so I'm not able to buff everyone at all times, but ideally I'd be buffing everybody, keeping them all at full, and you see Zigster coming back for that buff here now, look at the right side of my screen, a lot of buffs being given out, um, I got Goldfish again, keeping lock on that top door along with Huli, and that, also the other thing too, Huli, when he's standing on that right side ramp, he's also looking into the upper lobby of house, and checking to see if the push is coming from there, but we know it's coming from Ali now, we're, we're spamming that right side, our heavies are aligned that way, and, and look at where Goldfish in our position, we're actually in position, potentially take the uber into them, if they decide to overcommit too many players. Even Uber's here, chilling out, and that combo is still on the deep right side. I have scouts underneath peeking tunnel, calling that it's coming in from that right side over there. So we're we're kind of nervous about it. You know, we want to get that spam down. I'm I'm keeping a buff on Huli because I know that um I want him to spawn that right spam that right side. Soldier bombs. I'm able to easily get away from it. Devin unfortunately dies to a pill, so it's still five on five. We can't do anything right now. And so we're just chilling it out once again. Whenever they sack a player, you always sack a player right back at them. So they sack their roamer, we sack a scout right back at them. And it's still 5 on 5, they can't do anything. And actually the spawns favor the defending team in this situation. The spawn for the red team is closer to the second point than it is for the blue team, because they're at forward spawn, which is two points away. So keep that in mind. Uh, even Ubers gets kind of boring here, actually, because the other team is just so tentative in their push, but the score is still 0-0, so I don't blame the other team, it's a pretty close game, you know, uh, a match that has playoff implications, uh, because whoever loses this goes an extra round up in terms of getting playoffs, uh, a playoff spot, both these teams can make playoffs, so, you know, they're they're taking their time on this push, they're just doing very safe roamer suicides, 
And at the same time, we're playing very safe as well. You notice I've been playing back on point, not making any moves at all into them. They actually switch over to getting a sniper, and we get the pick onto the roamer. And because, De even though Devin dies on that counter sack, it doesn't matter at all, because we know they have a sniper, we can actually do this push into them. So you see Jav and Zixer pushing out that right side alley, and we're going to exchange the Ubers here and get them out of the way. And once the Ubers are out of the way, we're actually going to bring as many players into this fight as we can. Now I'm calling, we got to get this demo man here in lobby. So I call Huli in on him, and we're trying to take him down. Zan is so hurt. Rachel goes down in the yard, and they know they don't have any heals at all, so we can begin playing the heals. I drop down into drop down, we begin fighting the yard. Sniper goes down, and we have a huge man advantage here. I'm calling, don't overextend. I know they want to kill me. Rachel died, and Huli hits a nice pipe. Unfortunately, gold pushed a little bit too quickly, and that scout came out of connector and got him there. But if we took it just a little bit slower, we'd have, we would have kept more numbers. It doesn't really matter, though. I have a 60% advantage. We have the middle point under control, and this is a potential round winning situation here. Anytime you have large uber advantage, um, when you're on middle point, you could take two points with that uber so that's our that's our plan right now i have uber i'm healing people up we can't take the next point just yet and because it's if we push right now it'd be a five on six so we're just gonna wait around for goldfish to get here and i know we have a little bit of time because rachel doesn't have uber quite yet buffing up zixir a little bit before we do the push we call for a tunnel push here and this is actually one of our plays where we can either go directly into them or play it slow Romer goes into me and I decide to pop early. It was, a, it was kind of a bad pop, but it actually ends up working pretty well for us. We get the Romer, we get the demo man, we call, okay, go last, go last, go last. We got one guy on the cap. I almost died here. And uh, Devin goes down, but we're still gonna do this anyways because it's five onto three and we have a demand advantage. Our pocket goes down, Huli fighting this soldier, and I'm calling, okay, maybe this isn't such a good idea. I know they're gonna have Uber soon. D don't do this, you know. They're gonna have Uber, but uh, we get that guy on the cap behind them, and then they actually pull back, and that actually gets us the cap. So. It was pretty close there. I mean, Rachel was super close to getting her Uber. Uh, but what really did it there was we went underneath the tunnel and then pushed that deep right underneath on that ramp. Got into them. And whenever that roamer bombs you, that's a free pick right there. So you only need one more pick. Goldfish got the one on the demo. And that's what really secured the round for us. So going into this next round, uh, we're up 1-0. And we're going to do the same exact middle play once again because it worked out well for us last time. So I'm... Taking it slow, I don't want to take any extra damage that I don't need to take. Crit healing my scouts once again. Now I'm looking for my demo man. I'm thinking, okay, Huli needs to push up here. So I put the heals onto him. Zeaser goes down and it's not looking too good for us because I take a pill. And whenever you take a pill, you're super hurt, you're super scared, and you, you can't afford to die. So we call, okay, get out. We lost Devin. We're down two players. Get out of here. Goldfish is too hurt. Resetting here, and you know that they might push any moment now because they're going to have Uber and we're going to have Uber too. We're going to try and get it. I'm going to go back to my usual spot on the point. And then again, once we get the Uber, locking down that upper choke and forcing them to come around the long way. If they come around the, the long way through alley, it gives us more time for our respawners to catch up to second point and do an even number of defense. If they push quicker, they might be able to catch us without us getting the, uh, the respawns. But um, I have popped the Uber here and... It's looking kind of decent for us. I, I call that we can't do a push because unfortunately I've been flashing too much. We're too hurt. We're not buffed up. And there's really no opportunity. But we get the roamer and an extra pick there onto the scout, keeping our man advantage. So we're going to call for either a counter sack or a push. And we're actually calling for the push here because Goldfish sees an opportunity over into Alley. And we still have that number advantage. Who is going to call to go in? We still have four onto three. And I'm, it's looking kind of tentative. You can see me just hesitating here. I, I'm not sure where the trap is as I push in that right side mid. But uh, it looks like the demo man is backed out and it's looking clear, so we get back in here and we should be able to take back the point. Now notice how the demo man spammed me and I'm not dropping down. It's a, kind of risky for me because I might take too much damage, but I really want to put the pressure onto there and make sure that they don't get those forward spawns. So uh, I know that the ubers are even because we exchanged them on second point. And we got our respawn, so now it's our turn to be in control of the map. Whenever you have middle point in, under your control, you have control of the entire round. It's your round to lose. So we've evened out the Ubers, we've evened out the numbers, and now we can just do whatever the heck we want to do in terms of making something happen. And our, our go-to play in this situation is buffing Zigster and having him sacrifice for a force. That's what they were doing to us, we're going to do it right back to them. So we've been buffing our heavy players up top and spamming them. And notice how I'm not giving that many heals to my scouts. Scouts are very useless in this exact situation unless you want them to die. Um, because scouts are only good at close range scenarios, and any close range scenario for a scout is a potential scenario for him to die. We don't want to lose anybody except for Zigster, so I'm mostly putting my heals onto my heavy classes that can spam them and help Zigster out and get that force. If we can spam some players, put them out of position, and that might open up something for Zigster. But right here, you see them pushing tunnel on the 6v5, and that's a really risky move for them because we're going to change the Uber right here and go into them right here. We we pop in and take the double man, but unfortunately, Rachel is nowhere to be found, and I'm very confused. We see her over in the alley, and I'm realizing that there's no way I'm going to be able to help Goldfish, so I bail. She's forced the Uber, and I'm trying to get out of here as fast as I can. They lost the Devilman, and this is a potential situation where once the Uber comes off, we could actually win the 5v5. So, 
uh, getting together in yard. We know they're down Devil Man. That's a huge pick for us. And we begin pushing the the uh, the alley. Huli goes down, and they get that pick right back for them. And now we're in massive trouble. And I think what happens wrong here for us is that we just didn't have the numbers that we needed in yard, and their formation was better than ours. They had a better concave that was able to focus fire down our players, and we had a couple players that were stuck out in house that couldn't get into the fight and help us out. So the numbers actually favored them, and with Huli going down, that just completely lost this middle point. So uh, luckily for us, we did get the pick onto Rachel, and I'm going to keep myself an uber advantage, and we know that we want to push. We could go upper, but upper is usually, uh, going into house is usually dangerous because there's lots of traps, a lot of hiding spots, and you're going to get forced. So we actually go for the yard push here, trying not to use uber. I have a huge advantage, so as long as I can just avoid this roaming soldier, and he gets denied right there, as long as I can avoid him, I shouldn't have to use uber at all. Uh, so it looks like we lose Huli and Zigster to a, a well-placed trap there by Xan. But we still keep our uber advantage, and they're actually playing really close in-house. So we pop in, I put the uber onto my scout. Scouts are really, really good at chasing players down when they're ubered. And at that point, we go back, finish off a couple frags. They lost their demo man, they lost their medic. And again, we have middle point, we have control of the map. I have a slight uber advantage, and we're going to begin pushing the next point with the heal advantage. So it's going to be a 4 onto 4, 4 onto 3 here at the choke. And unfortunately, that scout split had a really nice move hiding on that right side wall. There's a little bit of a ledge on that right side wall when you turn the corner, and my teammates just didn't spot it out. Their players did a really good job of distracting, and I think Goldfish might have overextended there, just moving just a little bit too quickly, trying to keep the pressure on them. And the scout just goes over um, my scout's head and kills me. So what could have been a round winning scenario there is probably going to even out here. Uh, Rachel has a 40% uber advantage, but it's not going to matter much. She won't be able to do that much with it. Uh, and if she does decide to do something with it, it's a bit risky for them because we're going to get a decent force and maybe make something happen. You see them beginning to push that upper house, they're going to go for it, and we're down Zigster. So if we get Zigster up in time, it would be decent. But since we don't have Zigster and they have the uber advantage, this might end up okay for them. They're 10 seconds away from getting uber, I'm 20 seconds away from getting uber, and we're trying to discourage them from doing this push, you know? But, you know, they're committing players to the yard, and it looks like they're going to do this. We have Zigster now, so this is actually a good chance for us to get that uber force and then come back in with a better uber. And it looks like they're going to follow through with it. Here they come now, out of the house, Rachel, you see, with the uber, and they have haven't popped quite yet. We're calling, get that force, get that force. Roamer goes down. We trade Zigster 5 on 5 and the Uzubers. This is really good for us. Not only did Zigster get the force, but we also got a Roamer in the process. So here comes the pop. I'm taking in as many players as I can on this Uber because we're going to just completely flood the point and get as many frags as we can. We're destroying them in the yard. It's fantastic. We're getting picks all over the place. There's one player behind us that we need to be aware of, and he gets me. Oh! He gets me. I don't even remember that happening, but um, that's so unfortunate. I think at the time, I didn't even know that was there. I only knew it in this uh, demo because I could see through walls, but that's just super unfortunate. Again, another round winning scenario lost because I died. So that was twice in a row that we could have prevented that. And I think what it comes down to, oh, and right here, you're going to see Goldfish get forward spawns. I could start healing him and building up an Uber, but it really doesn't matter that much, the extra couple percent and uh, I'd rather just get positioning and discourage them from pushing the next point. And this is something that you saw me do back on middle, but uh, whenever, you know, even if they have a 30-40% uber advantage, you still have control of middle point. You have control of the entire round, so yeah, they could push out on 30% advantage, but it's also equally risky for them to do so, because if we stall them long enough, I could get uber in time. That's what happened last time, and again, I just want to get out there and set up positions so that they are discouraged from pushing. And typically teams are discouraged from pushing out a last point even more so than they are pushing out a second point. So they're not going to push out of this with that 30% advantage. I'm going to get Uber in time and now we can again set this up for our go-to play. And our go-to play here is the Zigster Roamer sack, right? But we actually have a three-man sacrifice that we like to do as well. Uh, a three-man sack works... it works okay. Um, what happens on this last point is that they have so many defensive classes that it becomes difficult to make any sort of play happen. They have a heavy, they got the sniper, they have the traps all over their place, the, there's a wall on Metalworks they can hide behind. So we just throw more players at them, and because they have so many defensive classes, it actually takes them a little bit longer to move out of last than they want to. The heavy has to switch back over to scout, the sniper has to switch off back to scout. So uh, even though they sack one roamer here by themselves, they're probably not going to push out of this. You see Stochastic still on heavy, it just shows that they don't want to push out of this. So we're, we're playing a really close corner. If they decide to push us, we're going to exchange the Ubers. If they, if they decide not to push us, we're just going to wait and stall for our respawners. And we're getting our respawners in here now, so they're not going to do this push. They could potentially exchange the Ubers, but it's, it doesn't favor them to do so, because they need that Uber to defend last. And if they exchange the Ubers, then we can actually do a slow push 
and because they don't have uber and we, it doesn't matter if we don't have uber we could just do a slow push and make it work but right here because they have uber we can't do any play into last without using our our own uber so um we're here in lobby what i'm looking for when i'm in lobby are snipers that's pretty much the only thing that can kill me besides a spy you see me turning around every once in a while but there's really no chance of a spy killing me uh, i have players looking into their last point calling out okay there's two soldiers there's two scouts there's no spies here and so once I'm confident that there's no spies, I don't need to look behind me anymore. Uh, I'm mainly looking for sniper sight lines. There's some pretty nasty sniper sight lines on this map. One of them on that deep left corner that you see about the roamer spamming me. The other one on the deep right side. And then even further in lobby, on the deep right lobby, I've, I've gotten sniped there as well. And uh, the last one, it's, it's pretty rare, but if my demo man isn't doing a good job of watching the shutter door, they can just open the shutter door and get a quick snipe on me while I'm here in this position of lobby. So there's a lot of sight lines I gotta be worried about, but... The other thing too that I gotta be worried about is making sure that I'm keeping all of my players healed up as much as I can because I want to set them up for the next play and if they're constantly putting me behind on heals, it's not going to allow me to get everyone buffed up for the next play. So you see Devin's hurt, like people just keep peeking and getting hurt I'm like guys you gotta it's not, stop taking damage, I want to buff up here. So I'm buffing up Devin, then I'm going to buff up my heavy classes and we're going to do the same exact three man sacrifice. We did it once, they didn't push out, and we're going to do it again. If the team pushed out when we did the three man sacrifice it might discourage us from doing it again. but because we did a three-man and they didn't go for it, then we're just going to do it again. <laughs> we can do as many three-man sacrifices as we want now because we know that if we do it, they're not going to push out a last. So Devin dies. We have people peeking. Zigster actually gets to the pick onto the roaming soldiers so we can sack even more players into them. We're like, go, go, go. You can go ahead and die. I'm going to I'm gonna buff Jav here. He's going to go again for it. And actually, the demo man might get caught left side. No, Jav dies to the pipes, so... Okay, reset, we're down a player, let's just get our respawners back and let it go again. And, and you're going to see the blue team begin inching their way out because they got those picks, on the, they got that pick on the jab, and Zixir is going to be taking some time to get back here. Um, looks like he dies again. So now they might go again. You know, if you're the defensive team, if, if we sack one, you sack one right back at us. In this case, they're not sacking one back at us, they're actually using Uber. And we come up with a huge, insanely better Uber, 50% better than them. And this is real bad news for them because they have a player stuck behind and we're going to use, like I said earlier, when no team has Uber, we're going to use that that no Uber advantage to just sort of move our way in there. And with the pick, we can just begin that slow push getting into them. Now we have precious 10 seconds here to make something happen. we got to use this power play to our advantage. So we begin pushing that right side choke, getting in through the shutter door. Devin dies, doesn't matter, going to go anyways. Five on five, they have a heavy. we got to focus them down. And can we make this work? Cap time? Yeah, we get it. So that's the second time in a row where they had players alive, but they just didn't sacrifice onto the point to block that, that scout that we had on point there. And um, I think it really comes down to a misplay from the enemy team. You just keep doing the same sacrifice plays over and over again, and eventually they'll make a mistake. And the mistake that they made was coming out of Shutter Door with the Uber. We forced them super early, and then coming back in with a better uh, Uber allowed us to open up a play where we picked their roaming soldier, and then we're able to go off of that. So um, six on to six. These mids haven't, you know, it's been 50-50. We won the first one, lost the second one, so we're gonna do it again. See what happens. We're going, we lose two players, and it's just not working out that well for us. Unfortunately, a lot of my players are overcommitted, and I'm like, I want to get the hell out of here. Uh, because I think we're gonna lose this. Jav and Huli actually turn plays onto their, um, and onto two of their players onto their medic including. So if as long as I just stay alive, I'm gonna keep Uber Vanish on my team. Unfortunately, we lose the scout demo. Uh, and, and this goes back to like sort of like the situation where okay, is it a miscommunication or not? You know, should we have stayed in or should we have not stayed in? I thought I made the right call by leaving. My teammates thought they made they, they made the right call by staying in and. Honestly, we should have just all done the same thing, but it actually ends up working out okay for us. You know, I leave, I stay alive, they get the medic, so we're gonna have Uber Vanish pushing middle, and we got that pick on a Stochastic who is hiding on second point. So, uh, now we begin this push here, and I potentially cannot use the Uber, and you can see I'm the last player in through the chokes. I'm letting every other player get in in front of me, because it's crucial that I don't use Uber when pushing the next point. Unfortunately, and we talked about this at halftime with my team, both my scout and pocket soldier didn't check for that trap. And I know stream chat was all like, you dropped, you dropped, you dropped, but it's really not that my fault at that point. Uh, my teammates should have been checking for that trap for me. And uh, it's a little bit unfortunate, so... <laughs> it seems, I've I pointed it out a couple times, situations where we should have won the round, where we just throw it away because I died. And that's the third time in three rounds that we threw away a potential to, uh, opportunity to win the round because I died. And uh, so right here, we force the Uber on middle. That's crucial for us. Nice play by Zigster. And now we're going to be two players down trying to defend this next point. And 
it's going to be difficult. We're not going to be able to do it. So our best plan of attack is to just set up some traps, spam them, slow them down as much as we possibly can, but don't lose any more players because we know we're going to lose this anyways. They have that teammate advantage. They just need to push quickly into us and take advantage of it. Unfortunately for them, they're just taking too long. And we actually get players into position here to potentially defend this. Demo Man's all over my ass. And I could have done a better job of um, avoiding that pipe that he shoots at me. But yeah, we just overcommit here. And... It's not looking too good for us. This, I think this is the the first round that we're going to drop. You can see what was happening as we go into it. You know, we forced the Uber on middle. That was good. Then we're holding second point four on six. And if it's four on six, you don't want to commit too many players to any fights because you know that they have more players to overwhelm you. And that's exactly what happens. We commit some players to, to one fight, but then the Doberman comes around the alley and flanks me and gets that pick. Uh, I'm not quite sure why we're able to, but we're able to get back into second point. And it's even Ubers because both medics died, so... You know, we're trying to make our way back in here with our respawn advantage, and we actually get two picks. They get two picks back, but their medic is caught out, and the scout is in a terrible situation where it goes down to Zigster. Demoman's stuck behind, and they completely wipe. Like, this is so weird to us, because we... I don't even know how we got back into this. Like, we were peeking lobby, and we saw that they weren't there, so we decided to go for it with that, with that respawn advantage. You gotta remember that that second point is closer to last point than it is to the enemy fourth point. So, uh, we were able to use the respawns to get back into that, and they overcommitted their players to that fight. Now, hopefully we don't throw this away, because I have 80% uber advantage here. All I gotta do is make sure that I don't use Uber, watch those sniper sight lines like I was talking about before, and then make sure that I, as long as I use Uber in the last, we're good. So if I can use the Uber on the shutter door, we win. So I'm gonna pop right here on the shutter door, bring as many players in, and just start beginning to flood the point. You're gonna see my technique here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try and put it on the pocket and scout as much as I can, and then notice how I turn around and crit heal Jav in, because Jav was capping the point, he has crit heals, I can turn around, bring him into that fight, and put as much health in him as I can. That's 3-0, first half. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit through halftime, uh, where I accuse my team of not checking that trap on middle. Um, it's been a pretty good match for us thus far. Actually, it looks pretty one-sided from at uh, first glance, but it's been closer than what the score would would look like. Uh, I think the middles have gone either way. We lost two middles. We won the first one, and then we lost the, the next two in a row. So I'm telling my team, "Hey guys, middles aren't that great. We need to make some sort of adjustment." And the adjustment that we decide to make is that our scouts are playing it a little bit too quickly and we're a little bit too ambitious trying to take that top right side. So we're going to call for uh, just a little bit slower play on middle, trying to keep frags in our favor. That's what we did the first time. Once we got that demo man pick, we played it slow and then we won the, we won the middle. Uh, and the other, the other mids we had were just a little bit overzealous. And uh, yeah, so halftime is over. We're ready to go, and I remember I remember exactly what happened. So we tell our scouts, okay, just play it a little bit slower this time. And Devin's gonna die like right away. You're gonna see it. Uh, my plan when I get to middles is be is to heal my scouts and demo man right away. Like I already know that my soldiers both have 300 health, so all I have to do is heal the, the players that have been there that don't have health, which is my scouts demo. And you're gonna see Devin just push without a buff, and he just eats too much damage and dies. So right away I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna lose this. I need to get out of here, and. That Roman did a really good job of getting aggressive and keeping me in the fight. I back out the wrong way. You're going to see it. I didn't even see that roaming soldier go into me. Um, but in hindsight, I probably should have ducked out tunnel instead of going to alley. But I, I was kind of greedy. I decided, okay, let's go alley. Let me get the health pack in time. And uh, just didn't even see that roaming soldier come in on me. So that was a really bad play by me there. But at the start, when you go a player down right away, you're going to lose middle. There's pretty much no way you're going to get back from that, losing a player that early on in the mid fight. So I was ducking into yard trying to get out of there and I just was not fast enough. So unfortunately I go down. So we know Rachel has Uber. We're doing a forward hold. And the reason we're doing a forward hold is because their job is to only use Uber in the last, right? Like I said before in the previous round, all I have to do is use Uber in the last and we win. So we need to make sure they don't do that. So we're making sure they're, we're trying to get them to use the Uber in the lobby and they actually go for it. They use the Uber in the lobby and now we have defenses set up at last point to potentially resist this. We have a, a level two sentry on the right side. We have our heavy. The, the critical part here is giving people as much health as I can and then putting the health onto the heavy because the heavy is going to be the best chance that we have at defending last point. Unfortunately, we lose our demo man. And at this point, we're probably not going to be able to defend, but I'm putting health into the heavy. He's trying his best to stop it, and it's just not good enough, so... Um, round point for them. That was a really good round by them, actually. They, they played it, you know, classic, textbook, 
5 CP, you know, kill the medic at middle, keep yours alive, use Uber, get picks, get the round. So, that was a really quick, quick, quick round, and we're thinking, okay guys, like, we can't script this middle, I'm telling Devin, please do not die, and uh, I'm gonna look for him right when I get to middle. So I come out lower, I'm looking for Devin, I see Jab, and I see Devin on that right side, I give him the buff, and I get the health pack, and now I'm gonna put the heals into that demo man, like I said, the demo man's gonna, you need to put health into him, so you can push up and establish his dominance at those chokes. The scout leaks past my team, and I'm in a pretty dicey scenario, but unfortunately for him, he misses his shots and I stay alive. And Ubers are gonna even out four on four, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep the cap, you know? It's three to one, I think is the score. Yeah, three to one. And once you have middle, you have control of the map. So we're just gonna let it even out here. No problem with that. You can see these middles are just like a little bit dicey for me. Like as I run out, I, I crit heal jab, which is good, but then the rest of it's not going so well. But anyways, uh, right here, Goldfish is calling, okay, Roamer's gonna probably sack for you, so just play out for a second. Just play back, and that Roamer sacks, and we get the easy pick. So now it's 6 on 5, we're trying to walk our way in here to either a good uber, or just they're gonna, you know, let them passively back out. And it looks like they're going for the second option, the passively back out, but then they come back in with the uber, so we pop better here. And they're down two players, including their demo man, so we're just gonna get behind them, and surround them, and make sure their combo can't escape alive. So you can see me here body blocking that soldier, now he's stuffed underneath, we're just stacking on him, he dies, Rachel dies, and this is looking really good for us to win the round. There are only two players alive, and we both know they're at last, so we're just gonna begin pushing the main door. We go right in there, and because we have heal advantage, we can just trade health with that soldier, he goes down. And now I'm thinking, Jav, get over to me, I'm gonna heal you up, we're gonna win this here. And... Uh, it's looking pretty dicey. They lose their demo man, we lose the scout. I'm like, you know, Devin's trying to push for the point and says come in and commit to this, but... I'm not feeling it, and um, I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. Like, as soon as Devin dies, I'm like, this isn't going our way. So, as long as I get out and, and keep our 70% advantage, we win. So... It's really important for me there to not stack on the point. Some You'll see a lot of the lower level medics just get on the point right away and die. But I just kind of half committed to it, you know? I, I, I supported my teammates, but at the same time, if I can just back out keep my uber advantage, I can make up for my team's mistakes. So I have full, full uber advantage now, we just wait for the respawners and push last with them, we can still win. I think what went wrong on that last push is that we just stacked the point too early and we just didn't have the numbers, we didn't play it right. We just threw our scouts at the point point, didn't do very well, but now here comes the super at the deep left side. We call that there's a heavy, demo man dies right away. I, I like how I ubered my demo man here and crit heals Jav. Looks really good for us to win this round, they're down so many players. And this is what you wanted. See this is what we didn't do last time. The, the previous push that we had, we stacked the point but we didn't have enough players there at last to sort of focus fire and destroy anything that touches the point. This time we were able to get to the point, stack it, and then just crush the point. And having a demo man there to put stickies on the point is is so good for that. So uh, that worked out really well for us. So the score is four to one, and this is match point for us to win the game. And these middles have not been going well. Like, and it doesn't help that goldfish lagged out a little bit right there. So I'm thinking, okay, I just need to stay alive here. Huli's gonna push up. I need to get heals onto Devin so he can begin his push because he hasn't been healed at all this middle. I get a decent surf out, but you're gonna see me here die to the scout, and um, it, I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking, like, at the time I was thinking like, okay, I'm gonna try and surf onto the top of that shack, but then I missed, and then I landed in connector, and in connector I could either get into house or get into tunnel, and I thought the scout would be pushing me from house and not tunnel, so I decided to go get out tunnel, but he actually pushed me for tunnel, so I should have gotten out house instead, but it was just kind of a 50-50 coin flip. And I went for the tunnel escape, it didn't work out for me. Now, I didn't even know it, but Stochastic is checking my Uber, that's pretty smart of him. Is he actually just gonna go- yeah, he's just checking my Uber, okay. Um, again, we have middle, we have control of the match, so we're just gonna slow it down, get the Ubers. There's no reason to push here. So, before I said when you're pushing last point on 6 on 6, we could just push it. The reason you can do that is because they usually have defensive classes and aren't willing to push out. In this situation, they don't have any defensive classes at all. They're just running a standard 6 setup. And so, we're actually scared that they might push us. And we think they might even be on Kritzkrieg because they called they called really early in the tunnel. So I'm playing out. Like, I'm totally out of here. They crits, and I'm out. I'm in-house. There's no way in hell I'm dying to this crits. Now that we have the Uber, I'm calling, okay, we can maybe get back in here. I don't want to use Uber, but maybe we can get back into this. 
So we focus fire down the roaming soldier and it's gonna be a four on to five. So we gotta slow, take it slow. I don't wanna use Uber here necessarily. And even if Rachel does get her crits Krieg, we're still gonna beat her. Uh, just like in the very first round, Uber beats crits. So as long as I just keep my players alive and with me, we're just gonna pretend like they don't even have Uber because they just can't do anything to us. So you'll probably see me Uber like a ton of players in here as many as I can. Like a pocket scout demo man would be a really sick Uber to do. So we call for the tunnel one, which is that one that we did earlier when we just shoved right into them. That gets us really close to their combo. Uh, I popped the uber because I heard that they crits, and I shove right into them as quickly as I can. Unfortunately, there's no teammates here to help kill them, so I decided to back out. And actually the combo <laughs> surprised the shit out of me because they were behind me. Uh, we chase the medic underneath, get the frag. There's actually one more player behind, he goes down, that's stochastic, and unfortunately I caught a little bit out of position. But it's going to work out okay for me because they don't have enough players live to chase me. And I'm like, should I help Huli? Should I not? And no, oh my god. Totally bad move on my part. Um, I was thinking that we're going to back out Alley because we had number advantage. But uh, Huli made the right call there. He backed out Tunnel. And we should have backed out Tunnel because I didn't have enough players with me. We had players behind chasing down Stochastic, the scout. And because of that, we were numbers down on second point. And that's something that a lot of lower level players don't quite understand, which is, yeah, if you hit tab, it's 6 on 6. But if not everyone's there, it's not 6 on 6. It's 4 on 6, it's 3 on 6, it's 5 on 6, whatever. However many players you have there, that's how many players it actually is. And I thought we had number advantage when in reality we didn't, and I backed out the wrong way. So that cost me my life. And right here we pause because Goldfish was lagging out. And uh, we unpause real quick. And it's even Ubers. I could have gone Chris Creek here if I wanted to, but uh, I don't think I was thinking about it at the time. Chris Creek actually works really well pushing last point on this map, but uh, I decided to just stay Uber because I don't want to give them a chance to push back in the middle. So that right side HUD is going to be messed up a little bit because of the pause, but it should resume momentarily. Uh, I believe Rachel is going to have a slight Uber advantage over me, but. This is match point, so they should be hesitant to push out. Huli is very aggressive in the house, locking them down. And it's decent for us, but I tell him, hey, you gotta be careful, they have Uber soon, so let's just play out. They they actually do have Uber banish here. I remember it being like 40-50%, so they're they're going to start this yard push. Oh, it's only it's only 30%, okay, that's not too bad. So I actually called for it to be larger than what it actually was. But uh, they begin pushing this uber advantage through yard, and I, I fake like I don't have it. I'm playing super out to bait them into pushing, and that actually works. They pop in, they get nothing with this uber, and then I chase down goldfish, and we just completely collapse on them in yard. My big worry right now is that I'm going to get sandwiched. They have players behind me, they have players in front of me, and all I have to do is worry about this roaming soldier here, and I'll be okay. Oh god. You can see there's a little bit of a, that miscommunication between me and Huli there. Uh, just like before, it's really critical that you and your double man back out the same direction. And uh, if, you, if this were League of Legends, like me and Huli would would kind of be like the bottom lane, you know? Like we just need to play together at all times and support each other. And uh, right there, like him and I just backed out different directions. So that didn't work out the best for us. Uh, but we killed Rachel. I have 40% over advantage and we could potentially win the round here as long as we get it. So, building with, with Goldfish, and we're actually going to do an alley push, and whenever you do an alley push, you want to start it a little bit early, because it takes some time to clear out the alley. There's so many trap locations, so many hiding spots, by the time you actually do the push, you're going to get Uber. So, we start the push at 75%, now I actually have Uber when we want to do the push. And I'm following Goldfish on that left side, there's a roller there, so I just decided to pop it in. There's really nothing here for us to kill, but I commit to Goldfish anyways, we get the demo man. And that's going to be enough probably to deter them from pushing last. Goldfish still wants to do this, but I don't want to die. If I die here, they can get back into the round. So I know Goldfish is like going to overcommit and I bail. Um, and now they have Uber, but they're down a player and a demo man. So they're not going to want to push out of this despite having Uber. But we're going to pretend like they're going to do it anyways. And they actually do do it. I don't even know why they went for this one because they're not going to get anything with this Uber. And that's going to give me that 40% Uber advantage that I need to win the match and back cap and match one. I think Devin got it out of the deep right. I'd have to watch it again to see where Devin got the back cap out of but I'm pretty sure he got it out of the deep right lobby because that's where he usually holds. 
So that's going to be the match right there. Um, I know I was talking pretty quickly. I didn't pause. I, I was watching a lot of the other YouTube video comments that you guys were giving us, giving me, and uh, I was pausing too much. So I tried to just run it in real time, give you guys an idea of what I was thinking when we were in the match. And if you like it, let me know. I'll be happy to do more of these in the future. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.